What's up, everybody? So we have some very interesting fight news for the UFC, and that is that Corey Sanhagen will be taking on Umar Namagomedov August 3rd for UFC Fight Night Abu Dhabi. That'll be taking place at Etihad Arena. And my re initial reaction to this fight is this. I think this is one of the most interesting and intriguing stylistic matchups in the entire Bantamweight division. And before you sit there and say, snooze fest, it's boring, it's this, it's that... If anybody was, if somebody was going to ask me what fighter inside the top five of the Bantamweight division do you think would be a guy that could solve Umar Namagomedov, my nomination would be Corey the Sandman Sanhagen, guys. Like, when I look at this fight, one, this was supposed to take place basically a year to the date of when this will take place, and we know Umar had an injury, had to pull out, so then Rob Font had to step in, and we saw Sanhagen was kind of able to win a rather boring decision. But what we know about Corey Sanhagen is while people want to point out how boring he's been and this and that, you can't take away from the fact that Corey Sanhagen is one of the most well-rounded guys in the entire division. He has pretty good boxing. He has good kicks. He's got very good knees. He's got good elbows. He's a good all-around striker backed with some really slick submissions and his offensive grappling has very much improved over his past few outings. Now, I would like you to obviously keep in mind, those guys do not have the same grappling that Umar Namagomedov has. And when we look on the other side at Umar, this is a prospect that obviously with the last name, it's going to make you go, huh, Namagomedov. And you kind of are drawn to these assumptions of, oh, he's just a grappler. He's boring. He's got this specific style where, yes, he does have outstanding Sambo. He has outstanding grappling. But Umar has some of the best kicks in the division as well. This man has a very nasty question mark kick, and he does have pretty good hands as well. He does a couple things that, I, that bother me coming into a matchup like this where he backs up in a straight line. He doesn't cut particularly good angles. But with that Sambo background, the grappling credentials that we know this man has and how good he is on the ground, it poses a real interesting puzzle for Corey because while I accredit Corey Sanhagen to probably having the highest fight IQ and not just the Bantamweight division, but one of the highest fight IQs in all of MMA, I'm very curious to see how he approaches a young, hungry prospect that is Umar Namagomedov, who the UFC is clearly trying to push. And Corey's one of those guys, man, that he, over his past few fights, right? I understand that people are going to say, well, they've kind of been boring. They've been decisions. And Corey has done whatever it's taken to win fights, which at this rate in his career is the most important thing. Stacking up those wins, continuing to get on the hot streak, which he's done. Goes out there, dominates Rob Font in, in terms of the grappling. And in terms of just the overall skill set that uh, like Corey provides, man. Like we saw him do this against Marlon Chido Vera. He seems to have found a way to not let guys get going. Not allow guys to implement their game plan and get in any type of rhythm. Like we saw that really on display against Marlon Chito Vera. He would just kind of pepper you with some shots, throw a kick, duck underneath, take you down, make you work back to your feet, and just always kept you guessing. Now, what is important to note coming into this matchup is while we have seen Corey's offensive grappling improve, I'm very curious to see what it looks like defensively. Now, I know that Corey Sanhagen has been taking guys down and been able to mix things together. and But these guys are not Umar, man. Like, I'm very curious. I'm just so excited to see how Corey tries to solve this, man. And I, something important to note is Corey Sanhagen seems to be working with Trevor Whitman ahead of this matchup to prepare for Umar. And something interesting to factor in is Trevor Whitman and Justin Gaethje, obviously, you know that those two work very well together. They've had experience going in there against a guy like Habib. Now, I know Justin Gaethje didn't win the fight, but he did have a lot of success against a guy like Habib in terms of beating up the legs, utilizing some of that movement before Habib was able to ultimately close down Gaethje and get a hold of him. But in terms of the grappling, when we look at this matchup, Corey Sanhagen does have some slick submissions in his back pocket that I do believe are going to be a challenge for a guy like Umar. Because if we look at just what Umar has done so far in his MMA career, right? The guy's undefeated. And anytime we see a prospect that's undefeated, it's always exciting because you always are tuning in. Like, is this going to be the first time we see him lose? Like, what happens when he faces some adversity? What do we see? And Umar took a lot of took a lot of crap for that last fight he had against Bexat Almakan. I would love to point out to you all that if you did not know who Bexat was before that matchup, you should know who he is now because that guy coming into that matchup, I didn't really know much about him. I did a little research, looked up some of his old fights. 
that man had some very slick striking. And I was like, there's a real shot that he could put Umar in some danger. And sure enough, he clips Umar with a good shot. And you saw the instincts of Umar, the, the, the whereabout to be like, okay, I'm hurt. Let me, let me do what I know. Got a hold of Bexat. And then just realized, hey, I have a significant advantage here in terms of the grappling. I'm just going to do what it takes to win the matchup. Because there was a lot on the line for Umar in that fight. If he loses to Bexat, like the amount of criticism he would face, like fighting this guy, everyone would be like, who is this guy? Like, and that Bexat, man, he is a very talented fighter. So that that was a great fight for Umar Namagamadov, considering he faced a little bit of adversity. He really needed to come away with a win because ultimately they wanted to get that Corey Sanhagen fight rebook because Sanhagen's ranked number two. He is one of the best guys in the division. He's been a staple in the top five for an extended period of time now. But I think that Corey working with Trevor Whitman, I know people have been critical of Trevor Whitman lately, which is just absolute blasphemy to me. Trevor Whitman is one of the best coaches in the game, especially when it comes to the striking. Just because a fighter doesn't win a fight doesn't mean Trevor Whitman all of a sudden sucks at his job. Like Trevor Whitman is one of the best coaches in the sport, always has his guys prepared. And I do believe he's going to make a difference in the corner for Corey Sanhagen because two brilliant fight minds clashing together to prepare for a very unique puzzle that is Umar. Because when you're so worried about the takedown of Umar, you forget because he's standing in front of you and he's throwing good straight punches down the middle, which are a little bit sloppy at times where I think Corey's going to look to counter those. But he does have those very good kicks that does Umar. And that question mark kick is fast. It's nasty. And if you are not prepared, you might get caught with it. And we've seen him throw that nasty front kick up the middle, which then sets up the question mark. He keeps shooting it up the middle and then comes up, boom, and whips it around the side. And, and there's no doubt that he's going to try to implement something like that against Corey Sanhagen because Corey's a guy that Outside of the Aljamain Sterling matchup, we have just seen ever since that fight, it almost is like a switch and a dial turn for Corey. He just seems to me like he's been a different guy. Overall, his grappling has improved. His striking is a lot more technical in his approach. And we saw against Song Yudong, like people want to point out, well, that was a TKO stoppage, but really it was, he opened up a cut and this and that. So it's like, you know, people kind of want to discredit there, but we have to credit the fact that Corey Sandhagen opened up that cut. He has really been working on a lot of his Muay Thai skills. We've seen that on his social media, his elbows, his knees are outstanding. We know about the flying knee as one of the best flying knees in MMA period. So that is his most dangerous weapon. But working with Trevor Whitman, what is something that we know Justin Gaethje loves to do, do and something that he did very much so against Habib, that is attack the legs. And Corey Sanhagen has a very unique ability to be able to fight very well out of both stances. So no matter what stance Umar is in, Umar is predominantly a southpaw. We see him switch occasionally. Corey Sanhagen is going to have that leg kick available. And if I'm Corey Sanhagen, I'm working that lead leg of Umar Namagamedov, taking away some of that explosiveness on the shots that he likes to shoot because Umar is very good at timing his takedowns. And he's going to have to really be careful coming into a matchup with Corey because we know about that flying knee of Corey Sanhagen, man. But overall, guys, this is just, so, this is like a fight nerd's dream to me. Like ta tactically coming into a fight like this, it's like, how does this play out? Like we see Umar and how good he's looked. This is his first, not just a test. This is by far the biggest test of his career. Like when, you know, coming into the rankings like he has and kind of getting that first taste against Beck Zatton, like we've seen him in there against some veterans like a Brian Kelleher. Now you're getting like one of the most well-rounded guys in the division who's been in there and beaten some top-tier competition in the division very convincingly. Like I know it was a split decision win over Cheeto Vera. We all know that that one judge was just clearly not watching the fight. That was a clear unanimous decision win by Corey Sanhagen. It was total domination. While his past two fights might be boring to a lot of people, the point is he has very much improved in all aspects of MMA and coming into a fight with a guy like Umar who's riding, you know, who's undefeated, who seems kind of invincible in a way outside of being clipped with a good shot by Bexat, Corey Sanhagen is going to need everything that he has been working on in this fight because while I think Corey Sanhagen is going to be better on the feet and I think he's going to be technical you know, I think the five rounds plays to the advantage of Corey Sanhagen. We have not seen Umar Namagamedov go the length of five rounds like we have seen Corey Sanhagen do. So I would like to think as this fight plays out, it's going to be on Corey Sanhagen to one, control the range, 
Keep utilize that reach that he has. Try to keep Umar on the outside. And if he does get taken down, find a way to threaten submissions and stay relatively safe defensively. Because when Umar takes you down, it's not the same level of threat, in my opinion, as Islam or Habib, but it's still there. He does have good submissions. He does have good ground and pound, and he is able to control you. He's very strong in terms of the grappling. So if he's able to get a hold of you, you are in a world of trouble. But what Corey Sanhagen has, and we've seen this, he does have good submissions when you are threatening the takedowns. And I would like to think that his grappling defensively has improved. We saw when TJ Dillashaw, I thought Sanhagen won that fight. We saw when Dillashaw, every time he would threaten the grappling and the wrestling, Sanhagen immediately was looking for submissions. Yes, obviously, if he could pull off a submission, that's great. He wins the fight. But more so to get you to, you know, to stop doing what you're doing, try to think about just trying to get out of the position, which then gives Sanhagen that split second to try to maneuver, scramble, and try to get out of that position and, and create space and get back to his feet. Because I really do think that Corey Sanhagen is the better striker. While Umar has that wild question mark kick and, and some of those different things. And, you know, he does have the better, I would say, probably grappling. I think Corey Sanhagen overall is the more well-rounded fighter. But nonetheless, guys, this is an outstanding stylistic clash. I want to hear from you all down in the comments. Like this video and drop your early predictions below. Are you riding with Corey Sanhagen? Do you think he gets it done? Or do you think Umar is that dude? And do you think he is able to get the job done come August? But uh, subscribe to the channel. Help your boy out. I appreciate you all. See you next time.